I'm now going to show you another way of referencing symbols that are going to be used within the same device. So this begins by drawing your master symbol. So I'm going to draw a box. I'm going to go back to drawing functions. I'm going to draw a line to represent the connection points. So you add the connection points to your master symbol first. I'm going to zoom in using control and wheel forwards and hold down the control button as I copy those across and I'm going to just put in a couple of connection points. I'm going to put in, say, four connection points on here. <clears throat> so that's my main symbol. What I'm going to now do is add some uh, contacts which could be placed anywhere else in the project. Now this could be the standard ones or you could create your own, normally open, normally closed, or give them uh, a particular meaning. So I'm going to place in here a normally closed contact and I'm just going to accept the values that are on there for the moment. And I'm going to place on a normally open contact. Now these are going to become cross-references, so the cross-reference text that's on there, the sheet cell reference, is going to be used. Now at the moment, if I use Control e for edit text, or I can use one on the menu, so Control e for edit text, I can see this is sheet and cell reference. I'm going to put a question mark in there, and I'm going to position this so it looks correct or looks useful on the references. So I'm going to add an angle of 90 degrees, Close that down, and I'm going to position that text where I want it, which is going to be just down here. So I'm going to uh, use F6, or right-click, and I'm going to choose Select Single Element. Right-click and choose Move, and I'm going to move it from there. I'm going to move it somewhere down here. I'm going to keep it on the same grid, it's not that important. Same thing, F6, click on the text on the next one. Right-click and choose Move and place it down in a similar kind of position. Actually, that doesn't look very similar, so I'm going to change the grid down to 0.5, and I'm just going to move that one back up a bit. OK, so that's similar for both of those now. So <clears throat> I'm ignoring the actual product names. And what I'm going to do is just copy across that one. And I'm going to have another one of those. So I've now got four contacts that could be used. And again, you could use any symbols on here. Once you've actually got those symbols on there, you can then save the symbol by windowing around the whole thing, right-click, and choosing Block. And the only options here are to create it as a block or a, a group of elements, wires, lines, um, or a component with auxiliary contacts. So we're going to use that one. So we click OK, assign a device, a product and we've then got automatically numbered connection points and we've got the contacts in the middle. As we double click on this we'll see that we've got all of the uh, auxiliary contacts uh, connection points listed as well as the four main ones. So for instance if I was to put in there that this is 11 and 12 on the reference points I'd see that on the actual auxiliary contact. If I was to place one of these on the page, place it down, if I don't fill in the connection points, then it will match the contact that doesn't have the connection points filled in. So you can see it references automatically the one on the end. If I was to do the same thing again, place the normally closed contact, but force it to say 11 and 12, then it will reference 11 and 12. But it's best not to have the guesswork there of having to remember which connection points. So I'll show you how to actually make that all make a bit more sense. <clears throat> and that's by actually using in the standard or advanced version, using the parts information, so using the type database. So functions and database. Uh, you might choose which part or which manufacturer it's from. I'm going to choose BNR. And we'll scroll down and say this is a new part. This is master one. Sample symbol. I'll choose which type of device it is. I'm going to choose that this is type in R. And I'm just going to say this is a, a relay. That's a lot of different relays. There we go. As soon as I click on the section underneath, I get the default list of properties. And the one I'm looking for is define channels. So I click on define channels. Ah, actually, I've uh, done this wrong around. I'm going to go back in and close that. Um, what I haven't done is actually saved that. I need to have that saved. So I'm going to go into Custom, and I'm going to drag that from the first connection point, drop it onto Standard Symbols, and I'm going to call that Master.
example main symbol. Right, I'm going to go back into functions and database, and I'm going to go to br, <coughs> br, and choose master one, and I go back to now define channels, and what I can do is type in the connections that I'm going to want on there. Now, at the moment, um, I hadn't really defined these properly, so I'm going to just type these in. The first four are on the main symbol, a, b, b s1, and s2. I've then got some context, normally closed first, so I'm going to put that as pin 11, 12, two opens, 23 and 24, and 23 and 34, and the last one, which is, I'm going to put as 41 and 42. And again, this is free entry, but um, I'm typing in the contacts that I actually want it to represent. So I'm going to go to the first, the main symbol, click on DB, and I'm going to go to my custom standard, and I'm going to choose a master symbol. And I'm going to say it uses the first four connection points. Next one down, I'm going to say is a normally closed contact. So I'm going to go into my standard EN 60617 or 6, uh, 61346. And I'm going to scroll down and find normally closed contact. And I'm going to assign it the first connection points here. And then the next one is a normally open. I'll scroll down the list. Relay is normally open and assign it to the next connection points, and I can actually copy that text there rather than have to search again. And the same thing with this, I can copy that. <coughs> and then this is 33, 34, and then finally do the same thing. Um, problem if you copy, it doesn't select the actual ID automatically. That's not a big issue. And then we go down to there and select those two. So that's it for the diagram. We've now defined the main symbol and the auxiliary contacts. I can go to close on there and <clears throat> if I was to select this using components, select BNR, I can see relays is in there, I can see my master relay and as soon as I pick this I can see it's got all of the right connection points assigned to the main device and the auxiliaries. So I can now pick any of these contacts. If I choose 33 and 34, it's got the part number, it's got the product, it's got the connection points, and it references correctly to the right point. Position is not particularly great and I hadn't rotated that, so I need to make some changes, but that's the basics. Same sort of thing if I choose the master device, I don't have the right terminal markings there, but as soon as I place it in, if I then search for that particular type, assign the part number, click OK, I then get the correct terminal markings assigned to that symbol. So it doesn't matter which order I do things, I should end up with the right information as long as I've defined it under functions and database in the channel definition.